being recognized as a top doctor is it's basically a highlight of my career to be able to say I am top doctor in my field. I'm very proud of being a family doctor and very proud of how far this has come. So after 33 years to still be recognized as someone that's outstanding, can't be greater than that. You know, one of the great things about Castle Connolly is I'm nominated by peers and nothing speaks higher than that, that my colleagues make that decision or that determination. So I can't say more than that. I initially chose to be a physician because when I was a kid, I had a family doctor and he knew I had an interest in medicine. So he always brought out models to show me things and teach me. And I was with him between four and 11. At 11, he finally retired at 89, but had taken care of my grandparents, had taken care of my parents, and there was I as a kid. So that was always kind of a foundation for me. When I was in medical school, I unfortunately got sick at one point, and I went to the emergency room with spinal meningitis, aseptic or viral meningitis. Because I was a gay man, and as a medical student, I felt it was important that they would know about my history being gay, I was immediately thrown into a room placed on isolation, this was in 1985, and told I have AIDS. This was before I even had a chance to explain there's no possible way, but I was diagnosed as AIDS because we didn't have the test. I was asked, can we do testing on you? And I said, no, I was terrified, and it was done anyway. So I lost complete independence when I was in the hospital. I had seven doctors see me separately from different fields and the diagnosis that I got was your HIV is so advanced that there's abnormalities with your spinal fluid. So you have lymphoma in your brain and you've got two months left to live. After all that happened, my internist who was taking care of me at the time said, wait a minute, we've got a pulmonologist, we've got a radiologist, we've got a surgeon. He put it all together and said, wait a minute, let's take a step back. And it turned out that I had something called sarcoidosis, which is an autoimmune disease that basically hits you and in most cases burns itself out. And that's what I had. So here I am 33 years later, still doing okay. So that taught me, you need somebody to really coordinate. You need someone to think through it all, not just a heart or a lung or a brain. You need someone to look at all those. And family medicine also focuses on um, brain, mind, body and spirit. And that's kind of who I am as a person. We're not just in our heads. It's what we experience in everyday life. So when I meet people, I get to know them for who they are. You know, we have a very different kind of office. It's myself, my office manager, and my uh, clinical coordinator. So it's just three of us. So people get to know us by first names, which is what we're comfortable with. When you come into an office, you're greeted immediately as you come in. When we bring people into exam rooms, our exam rooms are set up, I don't know if you can see there, but they're set up to be exactly like someone's living room. So it's a casual, more relaxed atmosphere. Nobody's feeling that they're being pressured. No one's sitting on an exam table. They're sitting across from me in a chair, much like mine, just a comfortable chair to engage in a conversation. We engage in a conversation. Basically, I wanna find out about that person before we even hit the medical part. I wanna know what's going on, what's going on in their lives, what's, what do they do for a living, what, what is their family situation like? And then we can get onto other issues that people might not be so, so comfortable with. But we're still at that relaxed level, so that makes it easy. You know, being an LGBTQ plus physician, allows me to delve into more sensitive areas with people so people can be more upfront with me. And whether you're LGBTQ or not, that, that's not important to me. The beauty is when I have patients that are transitioning, watching someone go from an anxious, depressed person where everybody has labeled them as such to basically opening up and becoming who they were meant to be all along. It's an amazing process because the anxiety melts away and the depression melts away. So you're helping people to reach their full potential. And that is exciting and that's wonderful. Interesting family history life. My husband and I have been together for 33 years, actually as of tomorrow. And we have raised two children from his prior marriage and have a granddaughter. So my son is 41. He's big shot at Netflix. My daughter's a photographer at 39, and my granddaughter is still in school, in elementary school. But having that and being kind of the first in our community to be a gay couple, we had to educate our community first about who we were and what we were about. And just like any other couple moving into a neighborhood, 
we were under scrutiny, but we became close with just about everybody. Now, when I went into medicine, I kept it very, very quiet for the first three years because I went to a very conservative hospital and I wanted to be sure that I wasn't going to be blocked from getting privileges based on my orientation. So I waited until my privileges were set in stone. Once they were, once I was accredited and everything was set, I came out. I, there was no reason to stay in anymore. And I remember one of the surgeons just coming up to me and giving me a big handshake and saying, I'm so proud of you for being forward and for being front and center, so to speak, and for all this. So yeah, I consider myself pretty lucky. The best part about being an LGBTQ plus physician is when I have an LGBTQ plus patient come in, I'm immediately putting them at ease. We know the same issues. We know what, what the experience has been like in medicine. And so we're much more comfortable because our backgrounds are very, very similar. And if they're not similar, we share something very comfortably in common. And it can be addressed in non-threatening ways because most patients have gone to doctors where they just feel not heard or they feel that they're being evaluated or judged. That doesn't happen here. In terms of diversity and inclusion in medicine, things are changing rapidly. Uh, right now, doctors, I think almost all doctors, are treating every patient that they see. However, what's happening in some of the southern states and other states in the country is there's now a push for transphobic physicians to feel more comfortable. That is, a doctor has the right to refuse someone care based on their gender orientation because the doctor might feel uncomfortable. That's not acceptable. I believe that everybody should be seen regardless of sex, gender, race, that should not take in anything into account. The issues are still the same. It's basically good healthcare and medicine unfortunately is turning a little bit backward where we've worked so hard to make sure every person is cared for appropriately and comprehensively. And then unfortunately that's, that's a danger right now.